So set A is five A's, one B, and one C. So multisets essentially allow you to have multiplicity of certain elements. So this would be like, set A would be like A, 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 B, C. And B would be, as you can see, as one copy of A, two copies of B, and four copies of D. So when we do union, we're still going to do union in the same typical way, but now, because we have five A's on the top and one A in the bottom, the union is going to have a total of five many A's. We don't get a total from taking five and one from the bottom. That would be more like a sum if we were adding them together. But it, since we have five in the top and one in the bottom, we sort of take the maximum of all the A's because that's what we do with sets, right? We don't add them together. We just look for what's in one and what's in the other. Any B's? Well, we have one B in the top and two B's in the bottom. So our union is going to have two copies of B. How about C's? Top has a C, so we're going to have one copy of a C. No additional ones from the D or from the second set. And then also we're going to have D's in there. We're going to have four many D's. So the union of these two multisets would be the multiset with five copies of A, the max of five and one, two copies of B, the maximum of one and two, the one copy of C from the top and the four copies of D from the bottom. Okay, how about A subtracted by B, the set difference here? So now in the top we have five copies of A, but we are subtracting out one copy of A. So what's that going to leave us but with four copies of A in the multiset? Comma, now we have one copy of B in the A set, and in B we're subtracting two copies of B. So we had one and we subtracted two. We don't allow negative numbers, so we have zero copies of B. We lost all of the copies of B that we had from A when we subtracted out the two copies from the second set B. In set A, we do have a copy of C, and it wasn't subtracted out when we subtracted off B, so we're going to keep that copy of C. And so therefore, the union of the, or the set difference of these two multisets would be four copies of A and one copy of C. Okay, try to do something in the same analysis on your own, same analogy here. Recall we have set A as five copies of A, one B, one C, and B was one copy of A, two copies of B, four copies of D. And see if you can do these two problems. So, assuming you gave it a good shot here, intersection, instead of taking the maximum like we did with the union, we're going to take the minimum because we're going to look to see how many are overlapping. So in A, we have five copies of A, B, we only have the one copy of A, so in total, at the end, we're just going to have that one copy of A. The one cop of, copy of A is the one overlap between the two sets. Comma, there's one B on top and two Bs on the bottom, so just like we took the minimum of five and one for A, we're going to take the minimum of two and one for the Bs. We're going to have one copy of B. Now, as far as the C's and D's go, no commonality, right? There's C's in the A, but there's none in the B. There's D's in the B, but none in the A. So this is going to be our final answer for this multiset, was just a single copy of A and a single copy of B. And finally, for the set sum, when we sum these two together, here's the place where we're going to add up the total number and see how much we have in total. Five copies of A from A, one copy of A from B, for a total of six copies of A. One B on A, two Bs in B, total three copies of B. Then we do have the one copy of C from the top, and we do have the four copies of D from the bottom, or from set B. So the total, uh, the end multi-set here would be six copies of A, three copies of B, one copy of C, and four copies of D.